Finally! Finally! After 22 years, the Rugby World Cup has come back to Australia! Which means, finally, I'm gonna get my daddy issues with Eddie Jones. Finally! I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be normal again! I'm gonna get this daddy issue off my back! My ruined childhood! 2003! Johnny Wilkinson! He ruined my childhood! Like, honestly! Oh, it was like... Like, I was... I've never been so disappointed! Never been so angry! Ever, okay? The reason I'm here doing stupid YouTube videos instead of, I don't know, anything else is because the Rugby World Cup 2003, Eddie Jones, Johnny Wilkinson cheating. Oh, finally. I'm, I'm either gonna have to relive that nightmare or uh, it's it's finally going to, going to end this 22 years of nightmare. Finally, the, the, the nightmare is gonna be either over or it's gonna be another repeat, okay? So either way, it's gonna be a good time, boys. It's gonna be a good time. So Australia have been confirmed 2027 Rugby World Cup. Five years away, only five years away. I can count down to the Rugby World Cup and this Lions Tour coming out as well. So a great few years of Australian rugby. I'm very, very excited. Obviously, as a result of this, uh, announcement there was another announcement that was done earlier as well and why is this not loading uh come on so the the united states was also announced to be the host for the rugby world cup in let's see if this works come on yeah the united states will be announced to host the rugby world cup for the next one at 2031 this is a pretty big to be honest i i felt like, people kind of underestimate how much people play rugby in America. I was in the US for uh, for exchange to play rugby. Okay, I went there to play rugby and there's like a big scene in uh, in the in the, in the West Coast in California. Uh, I went to Arizona. There was, yeah, like quite a big scene. There was, we, that was really cool to get, I was touring around California to play teams there. And, and the, but what, what's happened in the US is, uh, in the university teams, there's a lot of like spillover talents who can't make the NFL teams. There's a lot of very talented athletes who can't make the NFL teams and they just play rugby. And they're like, you know, there's a, they just need a bit more support. Uh, I, I think the USA could be, it's much, you know, it's, it's not a dead sport in the US as many people have like completely uh, expected. But yeah, it's definitely not to the level of uh, NFL or like, you know, baseball. But it's definitely, it's definitely there. And yeah, I, I had a lot of fun there. That was probably like some of the best times in my life. Um, some of the best times in my life going there. Just to have fun to play rugby in the US. Travel around California. Uh, yeah, it's a good time. So that's the next World Cup in 2023. And also there has been a lot of planning going in as well. So the USA obviously had a big struggle in the last couple, couple of years due to the pandemic. They literally de declared bankruptcy. Uh, 20 months ago and now they're hosting a rugby world cup so it's a huge bailout for them a huge moving forward for the for the country as a whole major league rugby is also a thing in the u.s now they're definitely picking up i watched some of it i thought the quality was kind of poor but obviously it will take time to build back up and you have you know international level players former greats like Ma nonu uh matt Gido, i think he still plays there uh, playing in the usa as well it's it's uh it's not definitely not a dead sport in u.s and just just the fact that u.s is such a huge market uh, it's definitely a huge, I mean, to not, I mean, to just the amount of people who would go there for, just for fun, to, to travel around, this would not, like, a lot of people say it's going to be like a dead World Cup, it's not going to be a dead World Cup, it's going to be quite a big, big, big event, and it's going to be, if, if done correctly, this will be huge, huge, huge for the sport of rugby, and uh, yeah, we'll see, and taking the, to, to do the sport correctly in the USA, the big one, the big man himself, I'm getting hair standing up behind my, my neck, just reading this, Warren Gatlin is going to be taking over the USA Eagles as the head coach for the 2031 Rugby World Cup. He's also going to be uh, the Lions coach, I'm pretty sure, for the next Lions tour against the Wallabies. And it's gonna after that, he's gonna go, it's gonna go over to the USA. Oh, let me just take a sip of my coffee. Quite big, quite, quite, quite big. He's currently working in at uh, the Chiefs. And um, 
who saw what Warren Gatlin has done with the talent pool in, in Wales. And the USA, like I said, there's so much talent, so much athletic kids that just hasn't been given the opportunity or hasn't given the right coaching environment to get there. Like there's so many talented athletes who can't make it in the NFL for whatever reason. They're just like, oh, right, time to get an office job. Whereas if they're given an opportunity to play rugby, they could be exceptionally good. They just need the right training. And this is a, and the, yeah, like I said, the success of rugby in the USA is so, so, so huge for the sport globally. It's by far the biggest market for consumption for sports. And uh, yeah, getting the foot into the door is absolutely tremendous for everyone. All of us fans, I'm extremely excited for this. And I'm, I'm actually keen to go to USA to watch this World Cup. More than watching at home. And so, yeah, anyway. So, as I was saying, my daddy issues. There were some talks of Eddie Jones potentially coming back to Australia and coach the Wallabies again for the next World Cup. And actually, you know, cure my daddy issues from my childhood. That'll be good, to be honest. I wanted to, I don't care what other people say. Um, I'm keen to give everybody a go, a second chance. And uh, I think if Eddie Jones can prove himself to be still got... The the, the 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 thoughts to still got the i guess the the uh the, the cutting edge thinking in rugby i think uh could potentially put up on a chance and this is uh yeah this is a moment this 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 picture is like etched in my brain george gregan running up with this fa this face george gregan makes it's like permanently burned into my brain as you I still remember this face. I remember seeing George's face at, before Johnny Wilkinson even taken the kick. I knew the game was lost. Johnny, like, 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 like I still remember thinking, oh no, the way George Gregan looked as he was ch ch running into Johnny Wilkinson before Johnny Wilkinson even took the kick. I knew that was over. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and next up we got some more news. Not sure why everything's so slow. So obviously with the selection with two two confirmed World Cups, uh, the Springboks gonna miss out once again. There's been a lot of disappointing fans from this from the from the from the from South Africa. As the, the last time and only time the Springboks ever hosted the Rugby World Cup was in 2000, uh, 1995. Yeah. Nelson Mandela was a Springbok jersey giving giving uh, getting the handing the cup over to Francois Pina. That was like yeah, that that put like like yeah, that that put rugby world cup on the map. Okay, rugby world cup did not make South Africa. South Africa made rugby world cup. I think okay, that was such a huge historical moment, um, like the best sporting moment ever. In my, uh, it's not just my opinion. It is the most like spectacular moment in sporting history to see. Like yeah, historically, it's just amazing moment, and that's not gonna happen again to at least uh 2034 which means it's uh, almost 40 years right almost 40 years since the south africans had a world cup so yeah really really unfortunate and i really do feel for the south africans i felt like the 2023 world cup should probably be be yours the one that's coming up in in france uh and then also rugby has made some modification to the laws coming up in July. So there are some trial laws that's so that the goal and dropout, the 50-22 trial laws are becoming a permanent fixture. They also uh, added a ban on pre-bound pre -bound pods. So sometimes you might, I think you've seen South Africa do this in uh, in the Rugby World Cup against England, uh, where they kind of like set up a pod. They tapped the ball, uh, set up a pod to, to set up a more in the middle of the field. Uh, so that's uh, that's basically from my by understanding no longer legal. You can't pre pre start the play. You have to have the player run into a tackler before you bind onto him to set up the the, the more if you want to. You can't pre like set the more and then like run into defenders um, as the Springboks did in the Rugby World Cup uh, against England. And also and this kind of like falls under the flying wedge extension for the laws. The flying wedge is where people kind of put up a little uh, a similar thing where they set up a pole with like a like a pony, pony kind of wedge, and they get like everyone to wedge that ball carrier forward. Uh, that's also that's already illegal, but the pre-bounding pot is kind of like a similar version of it, where you kind of like set up the pot, and then you, you don't wedge people forward, but you move forward like a preset more 
uh, waiting for someone for the for the opposition to engage sort of thing. You can't do that anymore. Also, the uh, the lower limb clean out is the law they change as well. So you, you are allowed to clean people out in the ruck. Like you can, you know, lift someone's leg up. Like not like you know, obviously not tip them over, but you can, you know, kind of like tackle them, lift them up, and tip them to the side. So you can pick someone's leg, like make take them off balance a little bit, and like flip them off the side. But you, you can you can still do that, but you can't land on them after you flip them to the side. And also the scrum break foot, we've seen this already in Six Nations. The hooker has to put his foot in front like this now. So you can't have your foot standing parallel in the scrum. Your foot has to be one foot forward to what the, what's called the break break foot to prevent uh, hinging on the neck. So a lot of teams, they, you can sometimes you see they put the necks on the opposition's shoulders and then they slip down for the engagement. You can't do that anymore. The break foot is there to make sure that your head doesn't uh, hinge onto the opposition's shoulders. So that's some law change. And also... There's some stricter, like strictly written law uh, that changes how water ball boys allowed to work in 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 the, in the game. So they try to speed up the game to reduce uh, on field stoppage. We've seen a lot of this, a lot like people getting like massages and stuff on the ground, everyone taking a drink. So now this very strict rules has been introduced to reduce like like water breaks essentially on the field, or including ex expressively written that the water boy cannot be a coach or a director of rugby head coach literally they've written this into the law to make sure rassi erasmus cannot run the water for the spring box <laughs> i thought that's a bit uh funny but still like, overall i think this is a good direction but just to make sure the south africans don't get any loophole but basically uh there's some very strict rules now if someone is injured on the ground only that person who's injured is allowed to get water and only from the the trainer who's treating them so it's not no longer the case where someone can just go down and take take a cramp or fake a cramp and everybody gets a water break you can't do that anymore right so that's first up second up the, the big things is there's only two water breaks allowed uh for both teams and it can only occur during a, a try or a stoppage in play so you can't just have people drinking water constantly every like every now and then to you can't have teams kind of just like faking injuries uh, faking cramps and everybody taking a water break you can only do that twice even if it's a cramp you can only do that twice and also the you know the the, the, the kicker gets the, some water from the from the from the can can get some water from t-boy uh, and also the um uh yeah so the obviously there's some penalties if you if if the water boys interfere with the referees it's a penalty uh, offense now and also there's a the thing so the only place where you are allowed to get a water is you can go behind your try line, you, behind your dead ball line to get water from your from your um, from your team, or you can go out of the field and get water from the technical zone, which is the the the, the, the area on the sideline where uh, all the medics and everyone is sitting. So you, you can literally. So the only other way you can get water outside of the two allocated water breaks per half is to as exit the field. Essentially, you go out of the field and grab the water. And that would not basically the game will play on without you. That's basically what happens. And yeah, I think that's really good. The law, the law changes that really speeds up the game quite a bit. I've seen way too many times where players just like going and cramping and everyone's especially in Australian rugby. We saw this a lot. Players cramping and he's just like this game's never gonna end. It just keeps everyone's keeps taking water breaks. Every three minutes someone's down with the cramp. Let's take another five minute break, guys. Um, yeah, so it's really good. They have limited that. Um, also, some news from Argentina. As we know, Michael Checker has taken over as head coach for 2023 Argentina. And he's been just basically uh, gathering, summoning his uh, his coaching staff for the team. And they're really aiming high uh, this Rugby World Cup, World Cup coming out. Like we've already talked about last week. The Pumas has a pretty good run, into the easy run into the semifinals. They just have to overcome maybe maybe the All Blacks are semi semifinal, maybe France are semifinal. To, to go into the final. So it's, it is definitely a really good chance for the Pumas. And Michael Checker is doing absolutely everything he can. Uh, and he's off, I, I still think Michael Checker has a few tricks up in his pocket. When it, you know when crunch time comes, he's, he's going to be able to pull that out for a semi-final win over the All Blacks. It's definitely uh, a thing that Michael Checker has in, uh, in, his, in his play deck. So he's, he's summoned uh, David Kidwell, who's a assistant coach at Paramount Eels for the for Rugby League. To join him in in Pumas, so this guy's gone, and also we've got Felipe Contempomi, the former Argentina great, leaving Langster to join uh, Argentina. And the talk is that after Michael Cech is done in 2023, 
Felipe Contepomi will take over as head coach. So he's going in as an assistant at the moment for Michael Checker. And uh, yeah, so Super Rugby uh, results. Uh, last round, clean sweep for the Kiwi teams over the Australians. Really, really poor performance by some of the Australian teams. Very close one. And um, yeah, I mean, 2023, 2027, Rugby World Cup. We need a lot of help there. So Highlanders convincingly beat the Western Force. This was a beautiful performance. Gilbert, the number 10, exceptionally well. Missed 100% of his kicks. And um, yeah, everything was quite smooth. You know, this is the biggest win for Highlanders this season over the Western Force. And um, yeah, really good, really good show off. And again, Fakitava, the 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 reserve number the number nine was exceptionally well coming off the bench once again for the Highlanders. And then later on Friday in the evening, the Brumbies versus Crusaders. Uh, the Crusaders came out with basically the, the potentially the All Black starting team, like most of the All Black starting team. And uh, yeah, put on a pretty good, pretty tough game. The Brumbies was close, and then the Crusaders just put the hammer down and pull it away. Eventually, uh, the Crusaders was able to close out the game uh, basically with penalties. And yeah, the, the it was pretty close, but the Crusaders, yeah, I think there was just too much talent from the Crusader team for for the Brumbies to overcome. Uh, ultimately, the penalty goals was the difference coming down to these two. And then we have on... Oh yeah, so more news coming out of the Brumbies. Last week, we reported that Lord Noah Lola CEO committed to Rugby Australia instead of going to Japan. So, th and we had also report that Nick White was going to go to Australia, uh, go to Japan as well. He's also committed to Rugby Australia to after the Rugby World Cup in 2023, which is really, really good. Two kind of like key players for the Brumbies and also uh, for the Wallabies as well, remaining in Australia, really, really big for um, for Australian rugby. And then next up, we got the Fijian Endura versus Mono Pacifica, the two new teams. Islander teams going on against each other. This was a really, really, really good game. This was a played in Western Sydney. And uh, yeah, two are uh, the Fimbi, not Fimbi, the, uh, what is it? Fimbi is a national war dance. Uh, the jurors did the, um, what do they call it? Uh, Nabole. And then the Mona Pacifica did another one of their own war dance as well. So like there was a, like, like a war dance uh, going off before the game, which I thought was really, really cool. And then the jurors. Man, they played much better this week than the last week. Following their, you know, huge loss against the Hurricanes. They really, like, showed a lot of control, a lot of discipline. The Mono Pacifica, despite having, I think, more opportunity to score, their handling was just lacking a little bit. And, yeah, the Jura was able to control the game and uh, squeeze out a win. 34-19 was able to hold out the Mono Pacifica from making a comeback towards the end as well, which was really, really, really good effort. And uh, big improvement by Enduro as well. And also, as a result of some of these, these maybe the recent good performance, there's been some talks. Uh, no, sorry, there's been a deal that's done with Fijian government. They're going to own own 51% of the Fijian Enduro for six million New Zealand dollars, which is yeah, which is quite a big, nice, nice payday for New Zealand rugby, I guess. And also, this is a uh, Fijian government just being um, yeah, being showing support for the team. They're basically a bit like the, the basically you know, long story short they basically create a separate entity and then that 51 percent of that entity has been sold to a fijian rugby uh, sorry fijian government and the other 50 uh, 49 percent is retained under new zealand rugby so the fijian endurance is um operating under this entity which is uh, really 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 cool and then uh the the Reds versus Blues, the big match on the weekend. I thought well, I was really disappointed with this game. I was, I had really, really high hopes going into this game. And the Blues came out absolutely blow the Reds away. That Blues backline was amazing, okay? It was just so beautiful to watch. I, I mean, I don't watch ballet, but that was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in rugby, at least in Super Rugby. Maybe I've seen better in, in international rugby, but that was just so beautiful to see. Uh, the Blues backline in play. Uh, I actually can't wait to watch the Blues play the Brumbies this weekend. It was, yeah, quite a quite a beautiful piece of art by the Blues. And as a result, and Bowden Barrett was just unbelievable. As a result, quite a convincing blowout win against the Reds. Um, James O'Connor was on the field, heavily strapped right leg. Uh, not really. He did he did like you know tick all the boxes for what you would expect for a you know a pretty good number ten. But Bowden Barrett really blew him out of the water. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> go watch this game. It was like the difference between the two backlines was just day and line. The Blues backline was just unbelievable, unbelievable, so damn good. 
and then also uh, there was a bit of injury came out of that game. Yuani, I thought like the fastest man in New Zealand probably. He's so damn good. Uh, he came out early in the game, 11 minutes into the first half. Bit of a put up his hammer dream a little bit, but the report is that he's going to be okay. Probably give him another rest this weekend. But yeah, the Blues didn't even need him to absolutely dominate the Reds. Uh, more news coming on the Blues. Carl Tuinuku Afe has is um is going to return to France. And uh, yeah, he's he was played in France for a bit before he came back for the All Blacks, and uh, he's basically signed to um to be no he's um yeah he's out of the country this year. He's going to Montpellier in the top fourteen next year. Uh, final. Uh, this is the second last game of the weekend. Waratahs was Hurricanes. Uh, I thought this was a really embarrassing show for the Waratahs. They were leading the Hurricanes. 15 points to nil half time yeah 15 points to nil and to allow the hurricanes come back 22 points to 18 and win the match steal the match yeah really really embarrassing i thought um i don't know what else to say to be honest this is just this is the mental attitude issue like losses are less it's not because you the hurricanes are so much better than you not because they're bigger than you not because they're phys more physical than you not because they're faster than you this is just mental attitude poor mental attitude led to this uh, yeah, really let, let let the gas off the off the pedal. Michael Hooper was not playing. Maybe that could have helped the situation. But in the second half, the Waratahs really just looked like, yeah, it's like 30 minutes to go. And they're already looking like, you know, looking at the clock, waiting every second to tick over, right? Uh, and then also the Waratahs was reported that there were some fans was giving a bit of racial slurs to Karifi, Duplessis, um, Kerefi, yeah, well, what can I say, mate, um, yeah, Australian fans, man, this is, uh, yeah, it's a bit, 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 bit disgraceful, but, um, yeah, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, I think it's more of a culture thing in Australia than people actually, um, yeah, don't take it to heart, that's what I say, don't take it to heart, I, I get it myself, and just don't take it to heart, man, it's, Pretty, pretty common stuff in Australia. Rebels, uh, Chiefs. This is uh, another embarrassing, embarrassing performance by the Rebels. This is probably more embarrassing than than the Waratahs game. I felt the Rebels were winning, um, did really well to stay in the game. The Chiefs was for, to play really poorly, to be fair. Uh, Throw a like Iwani was having a terrible game, and the Rebels were able to basically pick up his poor passes and. Um, scoring three tries essentially due to like basically chiefs own errors and then the the chiefs end up scoring a try in the dying second of the game um yeah i have a report in this game there was literally six players that could have potentially made the tackle to stop the chiefs going over for the try six players no one fronted up to to make the tackle and the ball carrier went over the try line uh, i ran like 15 meters to go over the try line really really not acceptable he just freely ran through six players in range to make the tackle nobody did this was really embarrassing and, and this is again similar to the waratahs it's a mentality issue it's not like because the chiefs are not more physical they're not bigger than you they're not they're professional athletes you know it's not like high school you know someone's had a growth spurt and suddenly they're bigger than you they're running faster than you and you can't tackle them right it's not like that you're all adults and the only reason you didn't make the tackle because you mentally did not want to make the tackle because you had a mental lapse on the field uh, when the pressure piled on. So his mental issue once again for the Rebels led to the loss. So um, also a, a new game has been added to the Ireland trip to New Zealand. They're going to play the Maori All Blacks before the three test series against the New Zealand All Blacks. Uh, and this will be a down three days before the first test at Eden Park. Yeah, play the Maori for more blacks three days before you play the All Blacks at Eden Park. It's pretty pretty rough. And then we have uh, Lance the Tigers, speaking of Ireland, Lance the Tigers beat Toulouse in the semi-final of the Harnikens Cup, which is the European Champions Championship. And they go into the finals against either La Rochelle or uh, Racing, I think in Racing 92. So one of the two teams, they will be going against uh, the... Johnny, Johnny Sexton. So yeah, really good performance by uh, by Johnny once again. 
and then uh so one of the band springboks players what's his name uh uh fawi ditanti i don't know I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know but this player was banned three years ago for you know juice for taking the juice or whatever banned substance and he's he's about to his ban is about to expire and he's able to start training with the team six months to, before the end of his ban so potentially see him return um at least involved in the team in about a few months time and finally last bit of news from the swing box uh, for south africa elton yenchis was arrested after a flight to johannesburg is it johannesburg where did they go yeah johannesburg and he was basically the report is that he damaged a light on the plane and got arrested afterwards for damaging uh yeah obviously for for malicious damage to property is the is the official term but angie and she's yeah was released on bail <laughs> his bail was uh how much was it his bail was 62 dollars bail <laughs> yeah um yeah a uh, thousand rand 62 dollars bail for breaking a light on the air on the airplane so there you go uh that's news for the week guys let me know your thoughts and uh, thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, pretty big years coming up for the rugby, and I'm uh, very excited. Hopefully, hopefully, Rugby Australia do it right and bring Bill, bring Bill back home, baby. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. Cheers.